there, is, there are three kinds of concentrations that are available in every school of Buddhism. Northern or Southern Buddhism, every, every school that is uh, the practice of uh, the three doors of uh, liberation. And uh, the three concentrations taught in that is uh, emptiness, signlessness, and aimlessness. And today we are going to learn uh, how to put into the practice these kind of concentrations because they have a capacity to remove fear and despair and help us to touch the ultimate and uh, leaving behind our notions like birth and death and so on. The three uh, concentrations called uh, doors of liberation begin with uh, emptiness. Emptiness does not mean non-existence. It's quite a different thing. This morning, before the transmission of the five uh, trainings, we recited, we chanted the Heart Sutra. The Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, in deep meditation, found out that the five skandhas are empty. He was looking deeply into his own person that is made of form, body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness, and found them equally empty. But to be empty does not mean to be non-existent. And that is why he said, uh, form is emptiness, but emptiness is form. Emptiness is not nothing. Suppose we look uh, at this uh, glass. It looks empty. But in order for the glass to be empty, it should be there. In order to be either full or empty, the glass should be there. So emptiness does not mean non-existent. This glass is empty of what? It's empty of tea. (laughs) But it's full of air. Emptiness, empty, is empty of something. And that question may be very helpful. So when we look uh, into this flower, (laughs) which is described as empty, what do, do we see in the flower? We see the sunshine inside. We see a cloud inside. And you do not need to be a poet in order to see a cloud floating in the flower. You know that without the cloud, there is no rain and no flower can grow. So it's very clear 
that this flower is not empty. It has many things inside. It's full of uh, sunshine. It's full of cloud. And then you can see what you can see the soil, the earth, the minerals, the gardener. And if you continue, you see the whole cosmos have come together and help the flower to manifest as a wonder. So in fact, the flower is full of the cosmos. Why Bodhisattva Avalokita said that it is empty? So we should ask him, Dear Bodhisattva Avalokita, you say that this flower is empty. I want to know, empty of what? It is full of everything. So empty means empty of what? Or full is full of what? Like consciousness is consciousness of of something. So the Bodhisattva will tell you that, well, you are right. The flower is full of the cosmos. There is only thing that it that is empty is a, a separate existence. A flower cannot be by herself. A flower does not have a separate existence. A self nature. Self nature. Svabhava. Từ tánh. Self existence. Self nature. Svabhava. Everything contains the whole cosmos, but empty only of a separate existence, of a self-nature. Because if we remove the non-flowers elements from the flower, there is no flower left. And flower, according to, uh, to Buddhist teachers, is a conventional designation. It's only a name. Conventional designation. Suppose we talk about the euro or the dollar. The dollar doesn't have a self-nature. It is only a conventional designation. It doesn't have a self-nature at all. And if everything has a self-nature, Everything has a self-existence and does not need others to, to be there. And then that everything will remain the same forever. Suppose it's talk about a child. A child. A child has no self-nature. No uh, independent existence. Without the father, the mother, the sun, shine, the water, the food, a child cannot be. A child is a conventional designation. And that is why a child cannot remain a child forever. He had to grow into a young man or an adult. If a child has self nature, and a child will remain a child forever. (coughs) 
so that nothing has a self-nature, nothing has a self-existence, nothing can be by itself. No nature, no self-nature. That is what you touch when you look deeply at everything. human being is a conventional designation. The human being does not have a self-nature. Man is made only of non-man elements. Looking into a human being, we see ancestors. We have uh, human ancestors, of course, but we have also animal ancestors. And we have also uh, vegetal ancestors. And we also have uh, mineral ancestors. Man is made of non-man elements. And if we remove all these non-man elements, animals, plants, minerals, there's no man left. Man cannot be by himself alone. Man has to interbe with animals, plants, and minerals. And that is why to protect man, you have to protect animals, vegetables, and minerals. And that is uh, the teaching of the Diamond Sutra. That's the most ancient text on deep ecology. Man is made of only of non-man element. Man cannot be by himself, herself alone. Man has to interbe with animals, plants, and minerals. In order to preserve man, you have tried to preserve animals, plants, and minerals. That is the teaching of deep ecology in the Diamond Sutra. When you look into the sun, you see the father. You see the mother, you see the ancestors. And a son cannot exist by himself alone, cannot be by himself alone. A son or a daughter can only interbe with uh, parents, ancestors, and so on. And that is not difficult to see as a biologist. You can look into the body of a person and you see that the person is uh, the continuation of his parents. All the cells, all the genes have been transmitted by many generations of ancestors. And then if uh, a son gets angry at his father, there's something wrong in it. There are young men who are so mad at their father, so angry at their father, that they dare to declare like this, that person, I don't want to have anything to do with him. That's nonsense. Because your father is in every cell of your body, you cannot remove your father. <laughs> out of you. The fact is that you are the continuation of your father, and you are your father. You cannot take him out of you. You have no private, uh, separate existence. That uh, 
that self, that the self, Atma, does not exist. A separate existence, something permanent, non-changing entity, and sometimes we call it soul, is not there. There is nothing unchanging. When you look in deeply into the five skandhas, forms, form, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness, you see everything is flowing, everything is changing. You don't see anything that can remain the same in two consecutive moments. And therefore, a self, a soul, that remains always the same, does not seem to be to be something real at all. There is no uh, unchanging self. You are empty of a self. You are empty of a separate existence. And neuroscience can help also. When you look into the brain, we see a lot of neurons. And they are looking together. They are firing, they are exchanging uh, information every moment. And there is no, no neuron that plays the role of the conductor, the role of the president, the role of the commander. And that is a community of cells that, that operate like a, a symphony orchestra, but there is no conductor. That's what neuroscience has found out. There is no conductor. There is a symphony. In our body, there are billions of cells. There are working together. There is no cell that plays the role of the president of the boss, of the one who is giving orders. Therefore, a decision is made. But there is no decision maker. A decision is made, but there is no decision maker outside of the decision. There is a feeling taking place. But there is no feeler. There is a perception that happens, but there is no perceiver existing outside of the perception. It's very uh, interesting. I think uh, practitioners of meditation and uh, scientists can sit together and work together and discover together. I think science, modern science, has found out the truth of no self. Suppose you talk about um, the wind, and you say the wind blows. It looks like uh, there is the wind that does the the job of blowing, but uh, it's very funny to say the wind blows. If it's not blowing, it's not the wind. (laughs) And we say the rain falls. Imagine a rain that does not fall. If, the, if it does not fall, it's not the rain. So you, you can say there is rain, bear, but you cannot find a rainer. You cannot find a rainer. <coughs> the same thing is true with our feelings, perceptions, decision. There is a decision that is made. But there is no decision maker 
existing outside of this decision. There's a feeling of sadness and of joy. But there is no filter standing outside in the background. Because there is no self. There is no svabhava. There is no self-nature. Everything is a conventional designation. Everything depends on everything else in order to express itself. And that is the teaching of uh, interdependence. Uh, inter um, uh, connection. You cannot be by yourself. It's impossible to be. It is possible to interbe, but it's not possible to be. And that is why the teaching of the Buddha on on Genesis, how the come, how the world come to be, is very easy. It's very simple. This is because that is. This this is not because that is not. Everything is connected to everything else. And that is uh, the meaning of, uh, of uh, emptiness. Everything is full of everything else, but everything does not have a separate existence. That is emptiness. And emptiness is not something negative. 